So the observer, just going to be introduction for a few minutes and then we'll have a few minutes of silence and then we'll carry on. So the, um, let's, let's use something different like a pen. Like this is a pen, this is an object. Uh, now if you are, like a pen is an object, uh, different things can be objects like uh, pain can be an object, uh, feelings can be an object, thoughts can be an object, time can be an object, location can be an object. But the first thing to, I like always like starting up with a very obvious object, like I'm holding up an object. And the reason I hold up an object is just to get the spiritual experience of can an object be you? Yeah, and so this is actually part of the, you know, first, this is like the basics. Like, uh, is to see a pen and to witness the pen. And is anyone in the room, you can just shake your head or nod or, not or whatever, is anyone in the room pen? No one? Okay, great. So, an object, and one of the things with an object is an object can be observed. Yeah, an object can be observed. Mm -hmm. uh, objects can do all kinds of things. They can, they can pass. They can pass in front of the observer. They can be in front of the observer or they cannot be in front of the observer. Or they can even change shape in front of the observer. They can do all kinds of funny things. But it's to get the clarity that if an object is passing or it's not there or it's in front of you, is to get the clarity that an object is not what you are with a pen. So no one's a pen. So the next thing, the next part of the exercise is uh, it's called self-inquiry. In, 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 traditionally, it's called self-inquiry. So you are, it's like, what, how do I experience myself in this moment? What is myself? And that's not a... We should start with the thoughts first, because this is a trick thing, because if you're in your thinking, you should let go of the thinking first. So if thoughts are passing by... Like, a thought can be here or, or it can pass, and another thought can come, or there might be no thoughts, or there can be lots of thoughts. So, there's not, so it's to see, like, observing, is there an observer of thoughts? Or are you, the, are you the... Okay, so this would be the thing, like, if you thought you were a pen, if I was holding up a pen, you thought you were a pen, well, the pen is moving, it can be there, it cannot be there. So what is it that's observing it going? So that can help to see that yeah, if, you're, if you're enmeshed with the pen or you're, you're so, it's such a meaningful object that you think you are the pen, but then the pen is changing. So what's observing the change? What observes it come and go? Can, is, the observer, is the observer of a pen a pen? So it's important to get the observation of thoughts because it, you know, these, these are experiential uh, exper you know, experiential exercise is the wrong word, but it's through spiritual experience, it's not through mentally thinking about the exercise. So, okay, thoughts are passing by, and the next thing is get clarity that thoughts are observed. But that has to be an experience, not an understa mental understanding. Is everyone, anyone thinking they're a thought? I mean, you'd have to think you're a thought, because you, 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 otherwise you'd be in the observing of thought. So, the other thing is, once you're clear that thoughts are observed, you can't pick up thoughts to think about the process. You, know, you just have to let that go. The next thing is, uh, you can do is the body. Yeah. Uh, like, this pen has a body. It's got a shape. And you may be aware of your own physical body. Uh, you may be aware of how big the body is, how tall the body is, whatever it is. But what's observing that? Is the observing of the body, the body? You see, just like is the observing of the thoughts, the thoughts, is that which observes how high the body is, how wide the body is? Can the body, can the observer be related to the body? Or is the observer observing the body? And then, uh, then if the observer is clearly observing the body, then, the body, then it should be clear whether the body is you or whether the body is not you. Yes. So, next one is uh, location. Is there a sense of location? What observes location? Is that which observes location located anywhere? 
And if, if the observer of location is located, then what's observing that location? And does that observer have a location? Now, location is what I call finite. Like a pen is, is limited, or it has its shape, it has a size. The body has a shape and a size. Location is also, it has a limit. It's limited to this location, it's limited to that location. Well, what's observing location? Is the observer of locations got a location? You have to experience that. Can that which observes all locations have a location? So these are, these are not mental. Don't go to your head. If you go to your head, drop the th thoughts. Don't visualize. If you make a picture, because that which observes thoughts is not of thoughts. That which visualizes. If, you, if there's a picture, what's observing the picture? Is that which observes pictures and images or memories? Is that a memory? Does a memory observe a memory? Or is that which memory has passed before? Is that memory less? Is that picture less? These are the experiential questions. Next thing is like some people may be suffering. They may have aches, pains, tiredness, fog. All kinds of things may go, may go on. But, you know, pain, pain is also a good one. If there's like pain. Well, pain, pain is like, pain is an object. It's something that can be here or not be here. And there is that which observes pain coming and going and pain changing. So, and even if the pain is fluctuating, or if it's got, if like you've got pain in the knee, or you've got pain, generalized pain in the body, like the observer that knows when there's no pain, and the observer that observes when there is pain, is, is the observer of pain in pain? Yeah. Or if there's tiredness, if there's exhaustion, if there's, you know, brain fog, whatever it is, that which observes brain fog coming and going, or tiredness coming and going, because these are like, even if a cloud came into this room, can it be a cloud? Or is there something that observes the cloud when it's in the room and when it's gone? But can the cloud affect the observer? Can pain affect the observer? Can tiredness affect the observer? Because tiredness can come and go just like a cloud. Pain can come and go just like a, a cloud. Thoughts can come and go just like a cloud. So that which observes all of these things, does it have any quality? And that's fine. If the, observer, if the observer of the body is limited, then what's observing the limits in this observer? So you see, you go to the observer and there's a more limitless observer, but what's observing the limits of that observer? Does that observer have limits? Does the observer have any quality? Is it so tall? Is it located here? Is it a little thought? Is it an image? Is it located? It, I call it time tracking, the sense of time. Some, you know, like something in the head counting seconds going past. Is that which observes that sense of time? Does time exist in that which observes time? Another way to do it is if there's a sense of time is there an observing of time and what's witnessing that observer? If, if the witnesser or the observer has any sense of limitation, what's observing that, you see? So, as you do this, you, get, you might find that you're peeling away layers. As you go to one observer, there may be another quality that comes up. Can you go to the observer of that quality until there's no qualities left? So as you keep doing that, so let, let's take, for example, pain. If, the, if you go to the observer of pain, if that observer is experiencing pain, then go to the observer of the observer of the observer that's experiencing pain. Does that observer experience pain or tiredness or whatever it is? So as you keep going, is there an observer? Ultimately, what is, uh, as you go deeper into more detached observers, experience disappears. So whatever is not identified with starts to disappear. When something is rendered totally meaningless, the only, thing, the only things that register in consciousness are those things which are meaningful. You see, like uh, if, if you're, one is observing a room, one isn't noticing a lot of things in the room, but those things which are interesting are observed. 
So if you go to the, what, so is there an observer of what you experience yourself to be which has no interest in anything? And in that observer, is there anything, is there anything there? Okay, so just use your own, whatever you are. If there's any sense of limitation, just go and see what's observing that. And then go to the observer of that. And then, if there's anything that's limited, or changing or passing, just keep going to the observing of that. Okay, we're going to have uh, about three or four minutes of silence just to practice this, and then we'll see how we do it.